So a full decade after the first allegations we're aware of against Lord Renard, the Liberal Democrats have begun not one but two investigations. The first into claims of sexually inappropriate and into how the party handles claims of this nature. Today, two more women have come forward to make new allegations, allegations that Lord Renard is denying. The Liberal Democrat deputy leader, Simon Hughes, is fighting the party's by-election campaign in Eastleigh. But he and his colleagues are also fighting allegations they failed to take decisive action to root out sexual impropriety by the Lib Dem's most senior employee. And that's why we've come to talk to him today. Do you believe the leader knew about any of this? I haven't had a chance to talk to the leader. Uh, it seems to me that when the allegations were investigated by you and then broadcast, uh, the party responded as quickly and as effectively as it could and should. There should be a formal inquiry. These are serious allegations. They need to be dealt with quickly, but they need to be dealt with properly. And none of us should jump to conclusions until that investigation is complete. On last night's programme, we broadcast interviews with three women who claimed Lord Renard had abused his power by propositioning and inappropriately touching them. I was a professional colleague in a, in a conference and he put his hand on my knee and suggested that we go upstairs, you know, to his room. He, um, uh, he just very suddenly got up and, um, and plunked himself between us and um, started moving his hands down their backs to places you know, where they had absolutely no business being. Both of you at the same time? Yeah, both of us at the same time. Chris was all powerful in the party, probably more powerful than the party leader. We all kind of hugged up close as you do in a photo. Chris was stood next to me. He shoved his hand down the back of my dress. I felt really humiliated and very undermined and very shameful. Those claims were reported to MPs and peers in senior positions at the time, including the chief whip, the party president and the equality spokesman who's now Minister for Women. This morning, Lord Renard announced he would stand aside from the Lib Dem group in the Lords and he quit his position on the Federal Policy Committee, which writes the manifesto. Since our broadcast yesterday, other women have contacted us to share what they say happened to them. And what's striking about these allegations, like last night's, is that they follow a very similar pattern. A conference or an event, a late night in a bar, and repeated unwanted approaches from Lord Renard. This woman is still very active in the Lib Dems, so she's reluctant to be identified. Five years ago, she attended a Future Women MPs weekend to boost the party's low number of female MPs. She was a parliamentary candidate. Gradually, his hand started to rub the outside of my leg. I thought at first he'd just brushed against me. Then I moved away and it happened again. And he moved closer and I moved away again. And he moved closer and he just kept brushing parts of me that I didn't want to be brushed. So I decided I was going to go off to my room. So I excused myself and he said, I'll walk up with you. And I said, no, it's fine. I'll go to the toilet. I got to the toilets and took a deep breath and left it a few minutes and walked out. And there he was standing there waiting at the bottom of the stairs for me. And when we got to the top of the stairs, he rubbed my back and said, why don't we get a couple more drinks sent up to my room and we can continue this conversation? I turned him down and got to my room as quickly as I could. I never wanted to make a big fuss. He was obviously trying it on and I was saying no and he wasn't listening to the no. Um, what was going through your mind at that point? I felt betrayed because this is a man who wields a lot of power. You did wonder whether you were wrecking your chances of any career move because you had turned him down. Another woman contacted us independently, alleging Lord Renard behaved inappropriately to her in 2004. She gave us this statement. We were all staying over at a hotel. After dinner, we were sat in the bar chatting at a table. He began moving closer and closer to me, making sure that his knee or leg was touching me. At first I thought it must have been accidental, but every time I moved away, he moved closer. Eventually I stood up and said I was going to bed. At that point he announced he was going to bed too. I left the room quite hurriedly and he followed me. In the end, I ran back to my room. What bothered her is that she says senior MPs and officials treated it as a bit of a joke. Everyone else who sat at that table, which included senior members of the party, did nothing. They were either giggling or smirking. And the next day when I told them what had happened as I left the room, they openly laughed and thought it was hilarious. The other woman we spoke to also didn't make a formal complaint, but she did raise her concerns informally 
with several senior party figures. In the beginning, I didn't tell anybody. I sat on it, brooded on it, and it was only after I went to a conference that I realised I wasn't alone and said, no, this has got to stop. I spoke to Norman Lamb and Ros Scott and to other colleagues and to Joe Swinston in the end. When I spoke to Ros, she was really angry about this. She knew I wasn't alone and she promised me that if she was elected party president that she would deal with this and make sure it didn't happen again. When you spoke to Ros Scott, Joe Swinson and Norman Lamb, what did they each say to you in terms of how this would be taken forward? Well, when I spoke to Norman, he said that Joe was looking into it and that Joe would deal with it to ensure it didn't happen again and that it was stopped. And Joe listened and said that she'd deal with it. Well, the woman you saw me speaking to there told the party last night she wanted to turn her informal complaint about Lord Reynard's behaviour into a formal one. The Lib Dems have launched a proper internal investigation. But the women we've been speaking to want to know when senior MPs and peers knew about these allegations six years ago, why such an investigation wasn't launched much sooner. Well, just before we came on air, Lord Renard issued a statement. He said, I absolutely deny any suggestion of improper touching, nor did I invite a woman to join me in my room. I note that these alleged instances supposedly took place in public bars with other people present. I'm disappointed and angry that anonymous accusations from several years ago are once again being made public in this manner in a clear attempt to damage my reputation. Let me reiterate that in 27 years working for the Liberal Democrat Party, not a single personal complaint was ever made against me, to my knowledge. Well, earlier I spoke to the Liberal Democrat President Tim Farron from his constituency in Kendal in Cumbria, and I started by asking when he was made aware of these allegations concerning Lord Renard. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, when uh, Channel 4 let it be known to uh, the Liberal Democrat chief executive that these allegations have been made. Um, and we acted very swiftly. Yesterday, uh, lunchtime, I met with a review group, um, which is chaired by myself and which also contains the Baroness Sal Brinton and the uh, barrister Jane Smithard. And the three of us will be looking into the allegations and to ensure that we have proper processes that can deal with not just issues like the ones raised in your programme yesterday, but also any others that might be there. No, no organisation, large or small, should have a position where people people within it, whether they're staff or whether they're volunteers, uh, are uh, victims of harassment, bullying or, or, or something else. And, and they should always, if they ever do uh, get into those circumstances, they should always feel there's some way uh, that they can let the uh, situation be known, they can complain and have the confidence that they will be listened to and that those complaints be acted upon. You say you've acted swiftly, but one of the women we spoke to raised this with her line manager in 2003, another with the chief whip in 2008, the party president in 2009. That's almost a decade of, of people complaining, and yet, until now, no proper investigation. Uh, well, you're right. I mean, from what we hear and certainly what I saw on your programme last night and uh, the digging I've done in the... Uh, the hours since that programme, um, clearly there is a case to be answered. There's a particular case, the disciplinary uh, procedure that will be gone through with regard to uh, Lord Renard and the case and the very serious allegations made against him. But there's also a wider issue for the party that uh, absolutely must be taken seriously, which is that there could well have been a series of uh, complaints uh, uh, made over a series of uh, years that were not taken seriously or that were not taken forward. Now, I don't know that for sure. There are allegations the time being. But you accept, do you, that on the face of it, it looks very much as if these women uh, complained and yet those complaints were not dealt with properly? Well, I, all I've got to go off is the programme I saw last night, which I thought was shocking. Um, and uh, I uh, have done some digging since then. Uh, and certainly that's, that's a case we have to look into. Our job as a committee, by the way, is absolutely not to defend the party. It's to do potentially quite the opposite and to, without fear or favour, look right the way through all of the evidence that's provided from anybody, indeed, including those who've come forward to you. Do you believe that the leader knew about any of these allegations? 
Uh, no, I mean, I, first of all, I don't know, but no, I'm, I'm sure that's not the case. Uh, when I uh, received the phone call on Wednesday night that this was a, a programme that was going to run, um, then, you know, that was at the same time, as far as I'm concerned, that the leader was told uh, as well. But part of my job, isn't it, uh, over the next few weeks, along with Sal Brinton and Jane Smithard, is to find out who knew what when and to do so in uh, a, with, a, with an aim to ensure that everybody who was a potential victim uh, in this case um, has, their, has, has their story told. And if they feel that they had told people, uh, had uh, made complaints in the past they weren't taken forward, then, yeah, we absolutely have to deal with it. In fact, far from defending the organisation, it looks very much from what you said that the organisation you believe has fallen well short. Well, I, that's what we're going to find out one way or the other, and certainly that's one possibility. We may well find out that is the case, and I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to jump to any, any conclusions, but I, I'm also determined that we get to the bottom of it, and as I say, there'll be no fear or favour in this. We need to make sure that justice is done for those people who feel that they have been victims and may indeed well have been victims. You say you found the allegations shocking. Do you also find the women we've spoken to believable? Uh, well, that's a tough question. Of course, I think that those people are believable. I don't... Um, in any circumstance, when anybody has put themselves forward uh, as a victim, then you must take them seriously. And that stands when I've been at a, a primary school this morning we've been talking about child protection, where you need to take, take uh, every allegation that's made dead seriously and that no victim should ever be made to feel as though they are in the wrong. Having said that, uh, a person is innocent until proven guilty and a due process needs to be gone through.